Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm just excited to be back because it's been a really long time and it was not intentional. Sometimes life just kind of hits you and it takes a little bit to get back to it. Luckily for most of the time between me now and the last video that I put up, I've been making art, which feels great. So, so yeah, my hand's not too rusty. My painting is, is there still going and, um, yeah, I just, I really missed connecting with you guys and putting out videos and making some forward momentum on some of the projects that I'm working on. Anyways, let's talk, let's talk <laughs> mostly, let's talk about this painting. We can chat about things in general, but I, I worked on this painting and I feel like I unlocked something a technique that I'm really excited about that created a really luminous effect and it wasn't a hundred percent on purpose it kind of was one of those things that I was open and exploring with the colors and as I was playing with it I ended up with a result that I was really happy with which is always a really exciting feeling because sometimes often usually for me that goes awry <laughs> and it uh, just means that I end up repainting a whole painting but, but anyways uh yeah, a little bit about this painting. She is available at my shops if you'd like to get the original painting. There's a link down in the description. And she is also the Patreon postcard for the month of June. So that means anyone who signed up for the postcard or the print tier by the last day of June, you will get a print of her. And that's the only way to get it. So anyways, moving on. <laughs> I, I started working on this one around the theme of like rich, enchanted forest. I... I love visiting the same anyways. I just find it really inspiring. It's a space that I love to be in myself and it just feels like it has so much energy and interest there and so many ways that I can interpret it. So it's, it's always something that I love to, to touch base with every once in a while. But um, this time I went with more of a mushroom theme and I don't really paint mushrooms that often. I think that they can be really cute and it's definitely very tangential to foristiness, but I don't actually paint them as much as I'd like. So, so yeah, I did this one. And the thing that ended up being really novel for me, and I, I should preface this, it is not a new technique. It's not something particularly special in any way, but it is something that I discovered for myself that I'd like to do more. And that is when I was painting her hair, I was putting down like an initial wash to establish the colors. And like I said, I was just kind of putting colors down. I didn't have a color comp before I started this. So by color comp, in case, in case that's not a term you use often, I realize I use a lot of them specifically from like, anyways, not everyone uses the same terms, but uh, I didn't have a a plan that I had painted out that told me where, what colors were gonna go where. I just was playing with this piece and I had a very basic color palette in my mind. I knew that I wanted it to be warm greens and that was basically it. So so I was painting her hair and I established that first wash with some like gradiated washes between more of a true yellow or a yellow, a greeny yellow I guess, into more of a forest green. So certain areas where it would recede back or as it gets lower away from her face is where I emphasized more of the cool green and then around the top of her head I focus more of that yellowy green and I let that dry and then I I wasn't really sure how to continue because I wasn't sure that I actually wanted her hair to be like green green I I wanted to be sure that her hair did have contrast from the background and that's a pitfall that I fall into often is walking the line between monochromatic in a very harmonious way that's really pleasant to look at and monochromatic to the point that certain elements just blend in with each other. So I was looking at this piece and it felt like if I continued shading like I normally would with those similar colors of those greens, I would end up the character that just blends right into the background and I didn't want that. I really loved the effect of the background and I want her to have her own space. So I was thinking and playing around with several different washes and I mixed up what ended up being kind of like a 
honestly, I'd probably describe it more like a, a natural blonde, like not like a, a more stylized yellow, but just like, yeah, you probably know what I mean, where it's kind of a, yeah, <laughs> I'm like at a loss for words, a yellowy brown. There we go. And that actually worked like a dream for the shade. It, it brought it to life. It made the high, the highlights, which ended up being that, that base layer. It made that look like that was the ambient glowing light source of the forest. And then this shadow color was closer to like her true natural hair. And I was just so happy that it turned out that way. It wasn't something, again, it was not something that I had like calculated or planned. It just was a happy accident that I fell into, but I would really like to experiment more with this with establishing a base layer that is much more saturated and fantasy based as far as the colors that I'm choosing. And then the washes, the layering, particularly in the shade that I would really like to push that more natural and then see what I can get if it gives that kind of effect that I'm looking for, which is a very saturated and colorful ambient lighting that's lighting the character and making them feel very luminous. I think that that's one thing that worked really well with the way that this hair ended up is that I focused more of like a, a true green in in her hair that would have been like the farthest from her face. So right behind her face, but like in the actual three dimensional space that she's taking up, the hair would have been receded farther away. So I liked to imagine that it would have been like more thin and you'd see more of the forest kind of shining through her hair. And that gave it like this, this placement within the world that she was living in and it makes her hair look like it's just glowing from behind. I just, I loved this effect. I'm really excited about it because it does open up a lot of ways to utilize it to, uh, to build up this kind of environment, this luminous space that my characters can take place in, which is something that I've been really wanting to focus more on and creating these beautiful, magical places for my characters to exist in. And I really loved working on this one because there was so much just flowing hair. It was basically the the main interest point of the composition. It was really taken up by her hair, which is something that I do time to time. It just feels like a very grounding piece to work on because it just helps me to get into the flow of enjoying painting. And it takes a lot of the like stress off of trying to make sure that that like anatomy is correct or <laughs> proportions or a lot of things that can be more challenging, which I love, but it's always nice to have like a go-to painting style that I can come back to, to reset, to just enjoy the process and get lost in that. And for me, that's very line work, heavy hair, heavy <laughs> paintings. So when I'm painting the hair, I can just really enjoy getting into the flow of how the hair is flowing and it just feels really relaxing. And I think that that's really important about creating art is finding the things that we each find a lot of joy and passion in and pursuing that. It's really exciting to be able to find the things that we're interested in that can be really challenging and can take a lot of mental effort. And it ends up feeling like this huge triumph when you actually create something the way that you want to when it is something more complex or more challenging but it's so important to know the things that we just have a passion for painting that we can just get the pleasure out of it because I think that art is one of those things one of those uh, hobbies I hesitate to say hobby but it's a use of time that can often feel unrelaxing and stressful even though it's really something that can bring a lot of those elements. And I want to, I want to find more ways to get in touch with like the relaxing side of creating artwork, the, the soul satisfying side. But my, my last little like analyzation for this painting, I'm not sure if I think this is a flaw or, I mean, it must be if I'm still thinking about it, but I, I did not execute the mushrooms in the most perfect way. I'm kind of two minds. Part of me thinks that I should have gone more contrasting with the mushrooms so that they would feel 
more like a focal point of the painting. They're more of a feature. They would draw the eye more. And then the other part of me thinks that that would have been too cluttered, too distracting, and too spread out throughout the painting. And that it's better that it is very harmonious with the colors so that they blend in a little bit more and are more of a second read like it is now. I am not really sure, but I, I do know that the execution wasn't perfect. That there, I think that probably what I should have done is found a way to, to make the mushrooms that were right next to like her eyes have more contrast. And then as they receded away from that focal point, that main area that I want people to look at, that they would blend in more and more with the environment and the character. That way they could have a little bit of the best of both worlds. There would be a lot of contrast right by her eye and her face, with the mushroom and it'd be interesting to look at, but then it wouldn't be overwhelming throughout the piece of those mushrooms pulling your eye several different places. So so yeah, that's that's just a note for me in the future that if I have a little detail like this that's dispersed throughout the painting, that maybe I can try almost like if I were to separate them from the painting that they would have like a gradient to their own as they receded from that central point. I don't know. Anyways, that's that's helpful to be able to look for things like that and to weigh the options. So next time I run into something like that, I can I can have already had thoughts on how I I would approach it. So I think that that'll be helpful. But ultimately, I'm just so grateful for you guys for sticking around with me, for being here with me as I'm painting a new painting. I'm really excited to get back to the swing of things of sharing the paintings that I am working on. And I have been working on my playing card deck that I'm just, it's like a passion. I mean, it is, it's a passion project of mine. I've always loved playing cards. I've been fastened with them. I have a little collection of my own. I'm really excited to create the one that I'm creating and to show you the story behind it. It's just, I'm, I'm just feeling really good about what I am working on. So I'm excited to show you guys what it is and get back to that. But, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here with me today. This painting again is available at my shop. If you like the original or over on Patreon, if you like a print of her, there's a link down in the description to both places. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.